Elon Musk fires back at the US politicians and their new plans on giving plug-in hybrid vehicles the same treatment as that received by fully electric cars. Elon Musk is open about saying that hybrid vehicles are a thing of the past and should be treated as such. Despite the big difference in battery size and environmental impact, however, hybrid vehicles are now seen as the same thing when it comes to one of the most important elements – price. The US Senate has moved forward with EV tax credit reform, resulting in a significant uproar amongst EV makers. After Senator Joe Manchin finally agreed to include climate change investments in a vast new measure package, the US Senate will go ahead with a sweeping new bill. Why is it big news? Well, the new law and other amendments will include an electric car tax credit overall. The US House of Representatives passed the $1.9 trillion Build Back Better bill last year. Still, the divided Senate has been holding it up ever since. The bill's inclusion of a long overdue adjustment to the federal tax credit for electric cars is essential to the EV sector. Even though it only accounts for a minor portion of the total expenditure, this is a serious issue. Senator Chuck Schumer and Senator John Manchin struck a deal that includes expanding the existing $7,500 EV tax credit and creating a new $10 billion investment tax credit for clean technology manufacturing facilities, according to a statement from Schumer's office. With the help of the Senate's Democrats, automakers will be able to retool their factories to produce greener vehicles and receive new tax credits and grants totaling $4,000 for used electric cars. Additionally, the bill states that Schumer and Manchin agreed to include $2 billion in cash grants to retool existing auto manufacturing facilities to manufacture clean vehicles, ensuring that auto manufacturing jobs remain in the communities that depend on them. So why exactly are Tesla and Elon Musk not happy about it? Loans of up to $20 billion to build new clean vehicle manufacturing facilities and $30 billion in additional production tax credits for solar panels, wind turbines, batteries, and critical minerals processing will be provided. Schumer said there was a good chance it will go to the Democratic-controlled House of Representatives after a vote in the Senate. Biden's proposal to increase EV tax credits to $12,500 per vehicle included $4,500 for union-made cars. He proposed lifting the 200,000 vehicle cap on the $7,500 tax credit for each vehicle manufacturer. General Motors and Tesla are no longer eligible for the existing EV tax credits because they have exceeded the cap. Toyota announced that it had reached the sales cap this month, which means that the $7,500 credit will be phased out over the next year. Tax breaks for electric vehicles have been heavily lobbied for in recent years by the automotive industry, which claims that it will be impossible to meet aggressive emission reduction targets without additional support from the government. To receive the new EV tax credits, trucks, vans, and SUVs with a suggested retail price of no more than $80,000 would have to meet some specific criteria. They would only be available to families making less than $300,000 a year. Increasing annual requirements for battery essential minerals would also apply to them. House and automakers said the provision aimed at China, which produces most of the world's critical lithium used in batteries. The deal also includes $3 billion for the purchase of zero-emission vehicles and EV infrastructure like the United States Postal Service charging stations. In response to increasing gas costs, Republicans have attacked Democrats for promoting electric vehicles as a solution, arguing that they are too expensive. It is Democratic contention that these subsidies would be vital in moving Americans away from cars fueled by petroleum. We want 50% of all new vehicles sold in 2030 to be electric or plug-in hybrids. Still, Biden has refused to support a deadline to phase out internal combustion engines in those cars. 
an additional $1 billion would be set aside in the measure to purchase heavy-duty vehicles such as school and transit buses and trash trucks. The law would contain additional tax credits and incentives to help domestic biofuel production and development of the infrastructure required for sustainable aviation fuel and other biofuels. At least $1.25 a gallon, and the SAF tax credit is worth it. Another interesting deal in the background happened between GM and LG Energy Solution, which announced that the Department of Energy would lend $2.5 billion to help finance the construction of new lithium-ion battery cell manufacturing facilities in Ohio, Tennessee, and Michigan. According to the department's plans, it has already raised $2.9 billion in grants for battery manufacturing. It offers low-interest loans for developing cleaner automobiles and their components. Senator Joe Manchin, a Democrat from West Virginia and a senior member of the Senate, has withheld his vote, which is crucial since Democrats need the support of every senator in the Senate to pass any legislation. In a surprising turn of events, the senator, who hails from a very conservative state, stated that he had agreed to reconsider the measure and now calls it the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. Some Tesla supporters were also upset with the new electric car tax credit plans included in the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. Some activists even sent an open letter to the members of Congress on Friday, asking them to reconsider a provision that is believed only rewards the production of PHEVs. For vehicles with batteries of as little as 7 kWh, the maximum credit of $7,500 is proposed. As a comparison, the highest credit now available for this class of automobiles is $3,334. Real-world testing has shown that PHEV's role in emission control has been dramatically overestimated, and it's difficult to justify such an enormous credit for low-capacity PHEVs. A 7 kilowatt hour battery might cost as little as $924. A battery for a low emission electric car costs between $6,600 and $13,200, depending on the size of the battery. To better correlate with the 7 kilowatt hour criterion with battery prices, it's been suggested that the requirement threshold be increased or the maximum credit granted for low battery capacity cars be reduced. Elon Musk firmly believes that hybrid cars are now a thing of the past and are just a phase of EV evolution. He replied to some tweets with the letter's text as an image, stating that it might be the time to move away from PHEVs. Can any member of the Senate Democrats justify a $7,500 tax credit for vehicles with 7 kWh batteries, batteries which cost less than $1,000? This is a flagrant waste of resources, which ensures that we fall behind in clean vehicles and enables further destruction of our environment. Please adjust. Tesla's entire vehicle lineup has seen price increases of 25% in less than two years. According to Elon Musk, Tesla commodity prices suggest that inflation may finally be on the decline. He previously stated that he intends to wait for that to happen before lowering vehicle prices. His remarks on the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 come just one day after Senate Democrats announced that they had reached a deal on it. In the last few years, prices have increased across the board, especially in the automobile industry. Moreover, the price of nickel has skyrocketed due to geopolitical events like the Ukraine conflict, which directly impact the cost of battery materials for electric vehicles. Tesla has raised its prices by more than 20% in the last two years alone due to all those factors. In early 2020, the starting price of the Tesla Model Y was $53,000. And today, the same car costs $66,000. Tesla's CEO had previously stated that the company's goal was to lower the cost of electric vehicles so that more people could buy them. Tesla's CEO said this month that the company is waiting for inflation to calm down before reducing EV prices. In one of his tweets, he mentioned more Tesla commodity prices are trending down than up. 
In response to a question about whether Tesla would lower its prices, he said it was too early to tell. Tesla vehicles would be eligible for credit once again under the new reform. Still, the cost of an electric vehicle must now be less than a certain amount to qualify. If Tesla lowers its prices, more people will be able to get the credit. Inflation is at four-decade high, reaching an annual rate of 9.1% in June, despite the Federal Reserve boosting interest rates to slow the economy. The surge in fuel costs and other items have struck Americans so hard that many think it's among the most significant difficulties the nation has been facing. Gas prices have progressively declined over the previous month to a current national average of roughly $4.40 per gallon. It's a big jump from their top of $5 a gallon in June, which was an 11.2% gain from the month before. When or if we saw signals that the inflation rate is dropping, then we would not need to raise our vehicle prices, Musk stated. It is feasible that there may be a minor fall in the automobile pricing, but this is ultimately reliant on macroeconomic inflation. It is not something we control. Where do you stand on this issue? Do you think fully electric cars should get more tax incentives than other vehicles or not? Let us know what you think in the comment section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next videos.